Welcome. My name is Megan Hefner, and I'm a chemical health specialist with Youth Service Bureau. I will be your host today for this presentation on COVID-19, vaping, and tobacco. This presentation was created by a colleague at Association for Non-Smokers, Minnesota. The Youth Service Bureau helps youth and families learn the skills they need to be more successful at home, in school, and throughout their community. Some of the services we offer include youth-focused family counseling, diversion services, including awareness classes, youth and family education, and school-based chemical health. We are located in Cottage Grove, Stillwater, and Woodbury. Our chemical health services are in several school districts in the area, including Stillwater, North St. Paul, and South Washington County. You can get in touch with us by phone, through our website, email, and Facebook. I'm here today to talk to you about the connections between smoking, vaping, lung health, and COVID-19. I'll go over what we know about how using tobacco products may increase the likelihood of contracting COVID-19, as well as intensified COVID-19 symptoms. Then I'll give an overview of health disparities related to commercial tobacco use and how they overlap with health disparities related to COVID-19. Finally, I'll cover some of the ways that the tobacco interest industry has exploited the pandemic to sell their products. We will first go over the connections between COVID-19 and tobacco. Here's what we know about COVID-19 and commercial tobacco use. We're learning more every day about COVID-19 and why it affects some people more than others. Cigarette smoking can suppress the immune system and cause heart and lung diseases. Smoking increases a person's risk of getting lung infections and getting sicker from them. The chemicals in cigarette smoke irritate lung tissue and change lung cells. This makes it easier for lung illnesses to take hold. Smoking makes it harder to fight illness and to get better from lung infections. A new study from the University of California, San Francisco, finds that smokers with COVID-19 had nearly twice the odds of progressing to severe or critical condition or death compared to those who have never smoked. Nearly 30% of patients with a history of smoking progressed to serious outcomes compared with 17.6% of non-smoking patients out of an analysis of nearly 12,000 COVID-19 patients. Those who have ever used e-cigarettes are five times more likely to contract COVID-19 than those who do not use tobacco products, according to a recent study in the Journal of Adolescent Health. Dual users of cigarettes and e-cigarettes are nearly seven times more likely to contract the respiratory disease. Of teens and young adults who were tested for COVID-19, those who had used e-cigarettes were more likely to be infected than those who did not use e-cigarettes. Early studies show that like cigarette smoke, the aerosol from e-cigarettes may irritate people's lungs. E-cigarette and vape aerosol has heavy metals, fine particles, and other chemicals that can attach to lung tissue, impacting lung health. The risk of spreading COVID-19 increases with behaviors that involve touching the face or mouth and spreading respiratory droplets with breath or spit. Social behaviors such as sharing e-cigarettes or vaping devices can increase transmission of COVID-19. This information applies to smoking tobacco as well as vaping or using e-cigarettes. I am now going to address the health disparities we know about in our community and how they relate to COVID-19. The general health of Minnesotans of color and American Indians is very different from those who are white. General health is also very different in LGBTQ and other communities, such as people with disabilities, those who live in rural communities and people who are homeless or have unstable housing. 
Some Minnesotans are part of more than one of these communities. All of these communities experience barriers to having the best health. This results in higher rates of chronic disease, injury, and violence. It is not individual choice that keeps these communities from being as healthy as possible. It is most often the result of unjust conditions in society and being underserved. These unjust barriers to good health are long-standing and built into everyday life and the decisions people make. They can lead to economic instability, higher rates of chronic health conditions, and issues with mental health. These barriers also play a role in the higher impact of COVID-19 on Minnesota's communities of color and American Indians. For example, African Americans are 30 to 36% more likely to die of lung cancer than non-Latinx whites. They are also 53% more likely to die of heart disease. And we know that COVID-19 impacts the lungs and heart and can be worse for those with underlying conditions. Long-standing systemic health and social inequities have put many people from racial and ethnic minority groups at risk, at increased risk of getting sick and dying from COVID-19. As mentioned, these unjust barriers to good health are long-standing and built into everyday life and the decisions people make. These barriers play a role in the higher impact of COVID-19 on Minnesota's communities of color and American Indians. Many of the same communities disproportionately affected by COVID-19 are also disproportionately affected by commercial tobacco. For decades, the tobacco industry has targeted children, communities of color, and people who are stressed and struggling. This can lead to addiction and lifelong health conditions that make people more susceptible to a long list of illnesses, including COVID-19. As you can see, the overall age, the, over, the overall average smoking rate is the horizontal line at around 15%. But notice the higher smoking rates in American Indian and Black communities. Among those with less education and living in low-income households, those who are LGBTQ, etc. One of the most insidious ways the industry has used targeting to hook communities in is with menthol cigarettes, which are easier to start and harder to quit. Overall, 25% of adults who smoke use menthol, whereas 88% of African Americans, 30% of American Indians, and 35% of LGBTQ individuals who smoke use menthols. COVID tobacco use and especially menthol tobacco use are all health inequity issues. Tobacco and e-cigarette companies are exploiting the COVID-19 crisis to market their harmful and addictive products around the world, especially on social media. In the United States, e-cigarette makers and vape shops have engaged in pandemic-themed promotions, such as free giveaways of protective masks with purchases and offering COVID-19-themed discounts. The manufacturer Smoke was giving away masks, hand sanitizer, and toilet paper, according to this post on March 26, 2020, on Instagram. Here's an ad from the Vapor Bar Vape Shop and Vape Lounge in LA, posted on April 3, 2020, on Facebook. Vaping Delights, which is an online vape store, advertised for people to use the code COVID-19 for 19% off on March 22nd, 2020. SS Vape Stores in Maryland and Pennsylvania had an ad to use the code STAY HOME to get $5 off on March 25th, 2020. 
As mentioned, tobacco and e-cigarette companies are exploiting the COVID-19 crisis to market their harmful and addictive products around the world, especially in social media. Quit Partner is here to help 24 seven. You don't have to go it alone. Support is available by phone and web and Quit medications can be delivered by mail to your doorstep. Using coaching and medication together can more than double your chances of successfully quitting. We know that people have concerns about quitting during COVID. This postcard with specific COVID-19 and tobacco cessation messaging was mailed to nearly 12,000 low-income households in multi-unit housing throughout the state of Minnesota. A copy of this postcard is available on the Quit Partner website, along with other promotional materials available in multiple languages. My Life, My Quit is a youth-specific cessation service that provides free, confidential quit coaching via text, chat, or call. We know this is a stressful time for youth. Many are not able to have the social connectedness they had before COVID-19. They can um, text start my quit to 855-891-9989 or call to talk with a coach or visit the website at mylifemyquit.com to learn more and get started. There are policies that have been put in place to reduce the access and appeal of tobacco products for youth. For instance, Tobacco 21 is a Minnesota and federal law that states it is unlawful to sell any tobacco products to individuals under the age of 21 years old. Tobacco 21 reduces initiation among youth. Next, there are flavor restrictions. Many local municipalities have been restricting the sale of flavored tobacco products. This decreases the appeal of tobacco products among youth since many start because of the appealing flavors. Lastly, there could be price discounting and couponing restrictions. This policy would ban the redemption of coupons and set minimum prices on tobacco products. This would also decrease access since many youth are income sensitive. This policy would keep tobacco prices high. Here we have youth pictured from St. Paul in Arden Hills. Association for Non-Smokers Minnesota is continuously updating their fact sheet to share the most up-to-date information. This can be found on their website at www.ansrmn.org. Thank you for joining us today and please reach out to the Youth Service Bureau or any of the other resources talked about in this presentation if you have additional questions or would like further information.